Hello and welcome to the 52nd video in the series Programming a Chess Engine in JavaScript. The Chess Engine is actually programmed now. Uh, finished off last video with a very basic evaluation and now what we're going to start doing is implementing the interface. Now I've been trying to decide the best way of doing this because there are sort of two sides to it. One is the actual interface itself, the GUI, and the other is then the code behind it that sort of links up with the engine. I've decided to go through actually setting up the interface first and then adding in the code bit by bit, which is how I did it. I just want to give a little disclaimer here. Um, if you thought it was bad with the JavaScript in terms of uh, programming standard, whilst the chess algorithm thing, algorithms and things are correct, I'm sure the way, well I know from a couple of comments, the way I write the JavaScript isn't correct. Um, the HTML and CSS, is, CSS are probably going to be really incorrect uh, because it's not anything that I, I do apart from like a complete hobby basis. And this GUI that I've written for the website here was literally an hour or so's work after having finished the JavaScript engine all those weeks ago. So please don't expect anything. We're going to create this. It's all done using fixed position. And I'm going to go a bit quicker than, than the normal, not explaining every bit of detail in the in the HTML because I'm making the assumption you're slightly familiar with it. If there are any questions or anything then please ask in the comments section or if you find that I go much too slowly and you're not interested at all in this then put that in the comments as well and I'll just skip it and get straight back to the code. So without further ado, this GUI here contains basically two elements. It's got a div so a section for the board and it's got a section on the right hand side here which contains these controls and a little bit of information from when the engine is finished thinking and the pieces and squares are all set using JavaScript and it's fairly simple stuff the only thing actually that wasn't simple and gave me a real headache was actually flipping the board but we'll um, get to that when the time comes and for now in this video we'll just build up the outline of the board and these controls on the right hand side here so a nice relaxed video for me as well not worrying about uh, the syntax of JavaScript and the code in the engines so to do this uh, the first thing is to make the board div I'll give it an ID so that we can refer it in the CSS and later on also in the JavaScript and just close off the div and that's all there is for the board actually the rest of the stuff is going to be done inside the CSS here so I assume you're a bit familiar with CSS but when something has an ID you can access it using a hashtag like this so hashtag board now says any properties I write between these curly brackets will be applied to the board div and the first thing I'm going to do is set its position to relative and again I'm not an expert in this so I apologize if anything I say is completely incorrect but as far as I understand relative essentially means any position characteristics I set like left right top bottom inside here um, will be applied to the position that the board would have been um, positioned in because it's inside the body at the moment it would be positioned at zero zero top left and uh, well if the FEN div wasn't above it it would be at the moment if I go back to the site here I've got this FEN div here so at the moment it would be wanting to position the div on the left hand margin here or the left of the window here straight under this input text box here so we want to make a bit of a gap here and also the same gap on the left as we have for the FEN text box here so relative positioning is, is usually used I think when you then want to have the elements inside this element fixed in a fixed position and then we're going to fix the position now so stop droning on uh, I'm going to say that the top then is going to be 20 pixels so that'll leave us then with a 20 pixel gap from underneath here so again it'll put a 20 pixel gap relative to where it was going to be positioned and then on the left hand side we'll just make a left margin exactly as we have also for the FEN input like so now there's going to be quite a bit of repeated code and stuff between the stylings here I could pull everything out and put it into individual classes etc etc but uh, hey there's there's no real point I know what I want to achieve and everything's then finished so 
So top 20, left 60. Then the next thing to do is actually set the size. So the width is going to be a very convenient 480 pixels. Obviously, so is the height because that leaves us 60 by 60, the squares. This is eight of them, and that's very convenient also for the PNG images that I have for the pieces. And the last thing to do is just to set a border on, on the board as well. Um, you do using a border style, say solid, and we'll also set a border width. And I'll set this width to two pixels so it's not too intrusive, but you can actually see it. So all of that done should actually, if I refresh this, put a little board on. And yes, it does. So we can see the outline of the board appearing here. So the next thing to do now is add in the controls on the right hand side here. So I'm going to add those in back in the HTML and this div is going to go below the board div. I'm just going to copy actually and paste this div and I'll call this an engine output div. So engine output and inside here we need a little bit more HTML than we had for the uh, board here. And in fact, I'm going to just drop and uh, just drag and drop some of the code in here so I don't have to spend ages typing out this markup. So the first thing we want to make actually is a select. And a select is just uh, the drop down box here that we have for actually selecting the thinking time here. And for this select, just you basically add things in using uh, the option markup tag, giving it a value and also then the text. So we've got one, two, four, six, eight, and 10, which gives us our select then for the drop down box. If I go back into the site here that's being built up and have a look, you can see that our drop down box has now appeared on the, the bottom left here. We'll be styling that in a minute though, so it's no longer on the bottom left. Okay, so now we've got the engine output div actually in there. I can start uh, looking at the um, CSS again, and I'm going to do something really naughty here, probably. Uh, first of all, get the engine output div. And did I spell it output like that or not? Can't remember. Engine output. No, I didn't like that. Okay, good. Engine output. And the first thing I'm going to do here is set the position here to absolute. So whilst the board was positioned relative to where it would originally have been positioned, so in its parent and below the previous element, absolute positioning is literally the, the coordinates that you give it, it will be fixed at that position on the page irrespective of the other things there. So it's a bit naughty, but um, what the hell and I'm going to have a left margin of 600 pixels and a top margin of 250 like that. So what that does then, so I just refresh the page here, is that now brings our select menu over to the right hand side contained inside a div which is existing here containing those controls. So back into the HTML, I'll just find my reference HTML as well. I want to put inside the definition for our just before just after the declaration for the div here the thinking time option there with a line break so that appears above the drop down box here like so so we actually have the thinking time inside here and now we can look at implementing the other parts of the engine output so below the select here I'm going to drop in the six spans here. So the best move, the depth, the score, the nodes ordering and the time all inside this engine output div which gives us then something like this. Now obviously that's not looking uh, very good at all. It's not very good as it is in the final version but all I did here is a very quick hack job and added in three line breaks on the end here so that it just moved everything down a bit. And like I said this has nothing to do with a permanently uh, good extendable whatever website this is simply something very quick and to, to get it all running and this is exactly what I did for this interface here like I said it was an hour's hack job after finishing the engine uh, so once I've done that what else do we need to add we need to add now the buttons down here like this and then we're pretty much finished with everything you need to do for the near future with the uh, 
engine. So the way you add in a button is you add something called a button, funnily enough, in the, the markup, which I've added in like this. And I've given each of them, obviously, uh, an ID so we can access them in the JavaScript code, set its type, and just give them the relevant names. And you'll see that I've got line breaks added on where I want a little bit more of a gap appearing rather than doing it probably the correct way and adding in some proper CSS. So if I go back over to the site now and refresh, you'll see that our buttons have now been added on OK down the right hand side here inside the uh, inside the, the window. And the other thing that I want to add on is, last but not least, is a game status right below here. And this is actually going to be used, at the moment it's an empty span, but what it's going to be used, it's going to be set the status of the game when the game is won, drawn, lost, or whatever, to say who's checkmated, etc, etc. And I think for now that's actually for setting up sort of the, the scheme of the way uh, things are set up is, is actually done. So that's it then for this video and sort of the rudimentary setup of the GUI and the layout here. In the next video then we'll dive into the JavaScript and start setting up the squares and the pieces on the board. So thanks very much for listening and again if you think it's absolutely terrible what I'm showing here with how I've done the GUI, it's too slow or indeed it's too fast then please comment on YouTube otherwise see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.